What's up, YouTube? Bang good. I just want to do that whenever I say bang good. Whenever I say bang good, I think of the older kung fu fighting movies where their mouth moves a lot and only like one or two English words come out. So that's probably what I'm going to do with every bang good. Yeah, in the mail type of video. All right, so they sent me out a 600 watt grid tie inverter to feature in a video, and that's what this video is gonna be about. So let's take a look. So this is the box that it came in, and here's the user manual as well. Now they did warn me before they sent this out that they only had the European plug on the end, which they also sent out an adapter for those type of things if you need to go from one plug to the other. But I don't think I'm going to need this because I'll show you a trick here later on. So this is your plug for plugging it into the wall and the grid tie inverter. Alright, she is brand new, nice and shiny. Alright, so this is the grid tie inverter. It has an input voltage of 22 to 60 volts DC. And the output says 170 to 260. Mostly that is overseas. Since I'm in the United States, it will do the 110 slash 120 volts that we use here. And this is the side with the on switch and all the lights. And I'll open up the manual to figure out exactly what each light does. Just so we're clear. And the opposite side has a couple of 30 amp fuses and your solar input. Here are a couple of the connectors that it does also supply with the grid tie inverter. These would be used for your solar input and that allows you to put your positive and negative wires into the connector itself and then you can tighten them down by the little screws on basically both sides. And then once you have your wire screwed down inside you can just put this back over to protect the connector. All right, so at the beginning, I mentioned that the only model they had was the European style plug, which isn't really a problem anywhere because this is the standard power supply plug or a plug that goes into a TV, a computer monitor, or a computer. So you can technically use any one of those. I would suggest getting one that can handle over 600 watts, basically so you don't heat up any sort of wiring. I have one from a plasma TV, and we all know how much power those suck, so this this one should work out just fine. And here's just a side-by-side -side with a European and a regular plug. They're all basically the same. The only thing that's different is this end. All right, we are outside, so I apologize for any sort of wind or random vehicles driving by with music or all that sort of stuff. So I have two 45 watt solar panels here, and I'm gonna be hooking up these solar panels up to the micro grid tie inverter. And I'm gonna show you an example of a 12 volt hookup only, where the voltage would be too low, and the status indicator is gonna read low voltage. And then I'm gonna wire them in series, and that should get us right in the optimum voltage range. All right, the first thing the direction says is to go ahead and plug in your mains outlet. And I'm gonna leave it unplugged from the wall until we get the solar panels hooked up because we do have the power switch here. And before I hook up the banana clips into the plugs here, I forgot to mention that these do unscrew. So you can slip a terminal behind here and tighten them back up to make your solar panel connections. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the banana plug into their proper position. And one thing I would suggest doing is make sure you have the correct ones going to the correct spot on the inverter. All right, so I have a kilowatt meter here that I'll be plugging into. The other end is connected to a 50-foot extension cord plugged into one of the outlets on the outside of my house. 
And at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it on and we'll see what the indicators over here do. Okay, so now we are getting a fault and it's telling us over here that our voltage is too low and that is correct because we only have one 12 volt solar panel hooked up and the output voltage for that at open circuit is 17 volts all right so i'm going to turn this off and i'm going to unhook the solar panels and wire them in a series configuration to give us 24 volts in order to wire these panels in series, basically all you do is take a positive or negative from one panel and wire it to the opposite in the other. So we're going to take the positive from this panel and wire it directly to the negative of that panel. And that will allow for the positive on that panel and the negative on this panel to be 24 volts. And for this demonstration here, I'm just going to use a wire nut to secure these together. And we'll do one last check to make sure it is correctly wired in 24 volts. And we are outputting 34 volts, and that is because we don't have any load hooked up, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. All right, we still have the grid tie plugged into the outlet over here, and now I'm just going to go ahead and hook up the solar panels. All right, now that we have the solar panels hooked up, I've got the kilowatt meter here. And these meters work in both directions as being used, coming out, and being pushed back into the grid. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the start switch on, and we should see some blinky lights down here, and I'll zoom in on that once we're on. All right, so what you see here is the lower red light flashing, and that means we're in the 10 to 100 watt range. And the blue LED, which sometimes will be steady and flashing, and all that's doing is adjusting for the maximum power point tracking feature. And you can see we're actually only putting in 54 watts, and that is at 120 volts, a half of an amp. And technically, since you do have stuff on in your house, this power is being used immediately. If I didn't have anything hooked up to the house at all, I would be putting a half of an amp back into the grid. All right, now I know that was a poor example because I only had two 12 volt panels and they're wired in series and it only gave me a total of three amps. I know, I know, I know, I know, but it was a demonstration, right? Obviously, if you wanted to take full advantage of one of these grid tie inverters, you would probably want to start with 24 volt panels in the first place and then probably try to get a little closer to the 600 watt range. I would imagine that it wouldn't be able to handle the full 600 watts, but I don't know. I wasn't going to disconnect my other panels just to find out to see if it works, but maybe I'll try that in the future. Speaking of future, in some future videos, I do want to do some testing with this. All right, let, let me back up. Let me back up. All right, so a grid tie inverter has a feature called island protection. What that does is whenever the power goes out and you are hooked up using that and pushing power into the grid or using it, whatever, whatever the case may be, as soon as the power goes out, the inverter shuts off as well. And the reason it does that is if the grid is down, there could be a lineman working on whatever he's working on and you're out there trying to pump in electricity and he thinks the lines are dead guess what happens then you would probably shock the shit out of them so they shut down which is a good thing which sucks because if you have a whole bunch of solar going through a grid tie inverter then you can't use your power especially if it was in a storm or something and you really want your power all right so what i have planned in the future is i want to hook up this grid tie inverter to a a UPS. Really, that's the only reason because I have a UPS. If I had a regular pure sine wave inverter, I would use that, but I don't. So if you are grid tied and your power goes out, you could probably disconnect your main breaker from the grid.
So that is going to be a future video I plan to test. I have heard it does work, but I don't know if it actually does. So if you'd like to see that and you're not subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the little notification bell so you know when I upload a video next. All right, so that was my poor demonstration of how a grid tie inverter works with two 12 volt panels because that's all I had left. Uh, what else? Um, so if your grid tight inverter that you ordered did not come with the correct wire, you could grab one out of a TV or anything else and use that. Or if you don't want to do that because you want to watch TV, you could definitely get one of these little adapters, one of these guys, or you could get real fancy and get one of these guys. This guy does it all. I mean, I mean, it's a... Travel universal adapter. Oh, it has a surge protector too. It's a travel universal adapter with surge protector. And check out the backside. It's got all your options. And if you're one of them crazy, crazy countries, you could do that. And on the top, you have an unlock and lock. <laughs> and you can also pull the Europe out. I don't know how the other stuff works. But there's also some connectors there and the center thing. I'm not sure how those pop out quite yet. Let's put Europe back. But you could definitely get one of these to use with the grid tie inverter if you really wanted to. Would I use it? No. All right, so that's all I really have left to tell you about the unit. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I have one more thing to say. If you would like to find out more about the grid tie inverter, and the universal adapters, click on the links down below. They will take you to Banggood. And it will give you all the necessary information you would like to know about them. Okay, well that's all I really know left to say. So we'll see you on the next one. All right, so Banggood sent me out a... What did he send me? And... All right, before we get into that, the and and I'll and the battery and your solar it, blech, and the, and um and the and 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 that will and I would suggest one and and the the and the all right, I do have a grid tie a grid tie you are on the and this and and this while well, be and there's a there's or your opinion. Why do I want to say your opinion? So if you're a grid die, grid die. And...